Cascade Hoops Talk, bringing the world NAI basketball one podcast at a time. Cascade Hoops Talk, this is Billy B. Hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Uh, we have Danny Neville. Caught up with him last Friday on the 23rd. Uh, talked to Coach Neville about you know his time at Jamestown, the the two runs to Kansas City, and then uh, you know what he has coming in this this season. It's a great conversation. I think you're going to enjoy it. You know, Jamestown is another one of those programs that really performs in the classroom. They had a team GPA, I think, of 3.50. Uh, third best in the entire country for men's basketball in the NAI. Uh, tip my hat to Coach Neville as well as to the entire Jamestown uh, program. Danny Neville has been at Jamestown. This is his eighth year, and in the past seven years, he's won 150 games, over 20 games a season. He's done a very good job there at Jamestown, uh, getting deep into the playoffs the last two years, two trips to, to uh, Kansas City. Uh, he loses a couple of key pieces with Brady Birch and Devin Schultz, but he's went out and picked up some transfers, and he's going to talk about that. Why don't we just give a listen uh, to Danny Neville, and he's going to tell us about Jamestown basketball. Cascade Hoops Talk, Billy D. Uh, hey, I got uh, uh, Danny Neville, head coach at uh, Jamestown, the Jamestown Jimmies. Hey, Danny, thanks a lot for being on. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on. It's always good talking with you, man. You know what? Uh, Kid from uh, Bonder and Idaho probably said the name wrong. Bonder and Idaho, you go to Grandview, you win, you finally get a head coaching job there at Jamestown. You you know you, you had to go through the graduate assistant stuff. Did you ever dream that after seven seasons you'd have 150 wins? I, that's that's pretty good, Danny. Um, I mean, I didn't really know. Like, I think a lot of people don't know this, but my three first years of coaching, um. I really didn't take, I didn't take, uh, I wasn't a grad assistant. I was just an assistant. Okay. Uh, part time. Okay. So I took, I took my, uh, I took my grad school actually online and, you know, I was an assistant at presentation college for two years. And then I was a part-time guy at Jamestown actually for a year. So I made in those three years, I made a total of $13,500. So, um, <laughs> rolling in the that, dough. I, yeah. To say that I'd be thinking, you know, I, I think about that a lot, like just looking back and seeing where, you know, our program's gone and, you know, I'm lucky to be, have been a part of that. And I mean, to answer your question, when I first started, um, this is, to be honest with you, this is crazy to be where I'm at right now. And I'm just, I mean, I think it goes back to, you know, all the role models I've had, the good players that we've had, that, you know, we have a lot of good things going on at our school too. So there's yeah. a... There's a lot of things that, you know, help us to kind of be where we want to be. You know, I kind of sticking with that, you know, last season you were uh, uh, 20, 25 and 10, 12 and 8 in conference, but you really finished strong in the postseason, which is kind of becoming your trademark a little bit. You get there to uh, Kansas City, you fell to a really tough Talladega club. You know, just talk about that experience last year, especially those two huge wins in Montana. Yeah, I think it's always tough when, you know, the year prior was the first year that um, there was one division, um, the first year that, you know, going down to Kansas City. And, um, you know, that first year we made a we made a pretty deep run. And, um, you know, we obviously lost a, some key pieces to that team. And you never know, even when you return a lot of guys, um, you never know how your team is going to be culturally and, you know, how they adapt to things and, you know, I felt like there was a lot of pressure uh, yeah. last year, uh, pressure to get back to Kansas City, pressure to do this, do that. And, um, you know, you, you kind of we kind of felt that pressure, especially mid season. We just kind of went through a low like, you know, and we just kind of sat down after uh, losing a couple. I think we lost two in a row to Briarcliff and Concordia and we just sat down and it's like, guys, we just, we just need to play. We need to have fun. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we really caught fire there at the end, just like we did in 2021. And, um, guys felt super confident and, 
you know, it's awesome to be down in Kansas City again. And, again, just like anything, the more times that you go down there, the more so that, you know, your your program is, is mentioned, is known. And I think that's really cool for, for our program and our guys. But um, we, we just need to figure out a way to how can we play, you know, up to our potential throughout a whole year. And yeah. I know, you know, basketball seasons are long and, and tough, but I, I just think, we need to figure out that piece where we can, you know, we're not just a team that's known for, man, they go on runs at the end of the year. You know, let's just be more consistent with our play and maybe try and play like that all year round. You know, before we leave Kansas City, I got to give a shout out to your fans. Uh, um, where I was sitting, they were up behind me. I got to meet a lot of them. But I, I tell you, man, Danny, you had to be proud of all those fans that came and, and the support they gave you. For sure. I mean, Kansas City was cool, but, um, you know, Montana was pretty cool as well because we played at Carroll and, you know, that champ, that region championship was, was Carroll. So they had, right. a, you know, they had a home crowd. They're playing at their own place and just so nice to have uh, such a great fan, fan base. And, you know, obviously it's family members, but. You know, you look in the crowd, you, you might rewatch film or something, and you're like, wow, there was a lot of people there that weren't parents, weren't family members, were just, you know, great, loyal fans. So, yeah, um, you know, it was awesome. You know, it's it's cool when you get those or- big orange flags that they're waving <laughs> around, too. It's just our guys love it, and I think it's, you know, it, it's a telling about, you know, how important, you know, some people are to us and how important our program is to other people. and. You know, it's just, uh, it's cool to have a support system like that. No, absolutely. So, you know, before we talk about this year, a couple guys have graduated, move on. I want to, I want to bring him up. One guy, Brady Birch. I mean, he, in my mind, he, he, he meant everything to your program. I mean, uh, just talk it, about it's what. It's kind of a, it's kind of a double-edged sword because he was with us for five years. Um, and he was just the guy that, you know, he didn't care about points. He didn't care about anything. He cared about winning. Um, I remember his sophomore year, we didn't know if we were going to start him or another guy that, you know, I think he, yeah, he was in the same grade as him. Um, mm-hmm. Brock Schramm, I'm, I'm sure you remember him. Yeah. So their sophomore year, I, I pulled them both in and I said, you know, I don't know who's going to really start. And I'm just having a hard time with it. Brock, you give us some shot blocking. So, you know, he's more skilled, better polished, but Brady is just that guy that's gonna dive on the floor gonna take charges um you know gonna do the all the stuff that nobody else wants to do and we met and probably about two hours later he comes to my office and says coach i'm gonna make this easier for you i want to come off the bench (laughs) and so there was you know yep he he made he knew the decision was difficult for me and he knew that you know i was going back and forth on it so to make my life easier and just he didn't really care he just said coach, bring me off the bench. And that was kind of the, you know, that was kind of Brady Burt's to us. Um, I think the only good thing, the only good thing about Brady leaving is now maybe sometimes people will think that I'm the oldest guy on our team and I'm the coach (laughs) and not Brady (laughs) Burt's. Oh, that's okay. That's good. I like that. You know, let's mention uh, Devin Schultz, his, you and I've talked about this before, but his growth as a player from the time he got to Jamestown until he graduated was just phenomenal. He should be so proud of himself. You know, just talk about the oh, job he did turning into a great basketball player. Yeah, I mean, he just – um, so he was actually a redshirt guy. So last year he was a redshirt freshman. It was his fifth year. Um, and that had a lot to do with him coming back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, those red shirts got guys that got that COVID year. I think it's hard to play six years or yep. not to play six years, but just to be a part of a program for six years. And, you know, it, it, we had a lot of talks and I, we felt it was best for him to, you know, kind of go on in, in his life. And, but when he was a red shirt, so his freshman year, he red shirted preseason. Um, we had some open gyms and our strength coach, watched one of our open gyms and he pulled me aside and he said who is that guy and i said that's devin schultz he's a new incoming freshman from minnesota and he said we got to pull him off the court and i looked at him like why and he's like you know the way he's running he's got too much you know he's too much weight on him and Mm -hmm. you know it it looks like he might you know (laughs) he might get injured 
Right, um, right. You know, his, Mike tear his ACL. He, he needs to get a little thinner. He needs to get, a, you know. So Devin Schultz, as a red shirt, while we were pre- playing in open gyms, he was riding a bicycle on the side. So he went from not being able to play in an open gym to, a, you know, fast forward to his last year. He's an all conference guy. And he was, he was a really, he, he, he was really good for us. So oh, yeah. It's he, just, you know, I told him that when his senior, um, you know, we had a little senior banquet and I said, it, it's a motivating story for me. Like, even as a coach, like, it's crazy how much you learn from your players. Like, it's a motivating story for me. I feel like, you know, him going through our program, I feel like, you know, for me personally, like, you know, you, you have some, you know, you have something you want to do. I, I, you, I always think back to Devin Schultz and it's like, man, if he could do it, I can do it. So yeah. it's, it's a really, it's a really cool and motivating story. And, and again, like, it was funny that you mentioned him about three days ago. I called him and I said, I told him, I said, I just want to tell you that I appreciate you always being a great teammate. And he could have easily, because he was a redshirt as a freshman, JV as a redshirt freshman, JV varsity as a sophomore, junior year didn't play that much because we had Brady Birch and Brock Schramm. So he basically, he out of five years, he played in one. But mm-hmm. all the rest of the, all those other four years, he was an awesome teammate. You know, it's just, you look at both of those guys, Brady Birch and Devin Schultz, not only are they good big guys, which hard to come by at the NAI, but they were just great kids and great teams. So I think that's what we'll miss the most. Yeah, and I want to talk about a couple of the transfers here in a minute, but you've had a uh, few guys have decided to move on, but you've still got four of your top seven rotation. You've got a great core coming back, Danny. I mean, it starts with Mason Walters in the in the middle, 24 points, 12 rebounds last season. I mean, what can you say about Mason that we haven't already said? I mean, after, like, obviously, like, you know, his sophomore year is the first team All-American, junior year, first team All-American. Um, you know, he's from Jamestown, so, you know, he's, you know, kind of like the, not the town celebrity, but everyone knows him and, you know, everybody appreciates him and him staying here and playing at Jamestown, his hometown. But I think the craziest thing is, like, you look at a guy like him and you're like, yeah, you know, he'll be good next year. But he had an awesome summer and he is, he got better. He is, he wow. is better than last year. He's stronger. Um, you know, we worked a lot this summer on just his ball handling, more, more so like guards skill stuff, um, ball handling, shooting, um, you know, just being able to do a couple more things. Um, but he's stronger. He's more athletic than he was last year. And we're really excited about him. And I think the best thing about him is humility. Like he gets better, but he's still, he remains humble. And I think not only does that help him, but it helps our team and it helps the guys around him too. Yeah. It's very, it's, I've talked to you about this before, but it's always obvious to me how hard he works. Cause, but you know, when the new season, every year I've seen him, the new season starts, I have to take, do a double take cause he gets so much bigger. I mean, stronger, right? He he definitely works hard in the off season, and then you got the the whole you got the whole backcourt coming back. Uh, you know these guys have really performed for you. Will Cordes, thirteen almost fourteen points a game. Mark Chose, he's going to be a senior this year, eleven points a game. And Cole Woodford, uh, you know, talk about what it means having that experienced backcourt coming back with Mason. I think the coolest thing with that is. Um, not only are they returning, but if you look at our returning guys, Mason's a senior, Mark's a senior, Cordis is a junior, and Woodford's a junior. So they're all, you know, they're they're returning, and they've, you know, their freshman sophomore year we made the Elite Eight run. Yeah. Their sophomore junior year we made a Sweet Sixteen run, and now they're all juniors and seniors. So I think just having that core group back and them being older. Um, more mature is huge, but um, guard wise, I mean, it's nice just having those same guys. We love Woodford on the left side, um, using his left hand, you know, can really shoot it. Um, had a really good summer as well. Uh, Cordis will look to him being probably our primary um, scoring guard. Right. So he'll, he'll move more so into a, more of a score. Um, and then Chose is, um, you know, he's honestly a question mark, uh, he hasn't done anything all summer, and he's still not practicing right now. He has a uh, um, some issues with his ankle. Uh, oh, we no. think he'll be ready in about 
he'll he'll be ready in about two weeks. But um, one positive, you know, that I've really taken out of that is he's sat out that long, so he's more so like you know conversating with the coaches and being around the coaches because he can't you know he can't play, he can't go out there and do stuff with his teammates, and so I think he's getting you know more so of that side, right? Which is very beneficial to him. He's getting to know us in a in a different light. You know, I've heard that, you know, I interview a lot of players at the end of the season, as you know, and I've had conversations with guys about that. Like they have, a, uh, you know, really good ball players and they have to sit out a year for an injury. And they they always talk about how much they learn by just watching the game and sitting and, out. Yeah. They always seem to learn a sure. lot from that. That's a great point. Yeah. You know, I want to get to your, your transfers, but before I do, I got to congratulate you. I wanted to start the uh, interviews with some of the top grade point average programs in the country. And your program, I think you were third in the country, all NAI basketball for grade point average. So, you know, what what does it mean to you to, you know, these guys aren't just great athletes, they're, they're students as well, and that they yeah. perform in the classroom. What does that mean to you? I mean, it means a lot, uh, but that – I mean, also that ties into our recruiting. We're we're getting guys that you know coming out of high school, you know, have have been good students, and you know, I think that's all part of it. When when you're when you're a coach and you're not having to worry about academics, you're not having to follow kids to class. Um, yep. They're actually, I mean, we had we had a team GPA is three five, so you know that even the smart kids they're putting in work, um, and you know, for some of those kids that maybe you know, academics doesn't come to them. Um, they're working hard to, to try and get a, the best GPA possible. So I think it speaks volumes to, to them. I don't think it really has to do with me much other than just recruiting the right type of guys. But yeah. other than that, we don't, we don't talk a lot about academics. We just, we set a standard and, you know, we we're confident and we believe in them that they will do it. So I'm not big into, you know, trying to babysit their, them about academics. But also with saying that, if I don't want to babysit, I should probably get the right kind of guys <laughs> recruiting-wise. Yeah, but because – it, it, Hey, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this right now. I am definitely not tutoring them because <laughs> if I was tutoring them, we wouldn't have had a three five. Well, it's good you bring in good kids because if you end up with a low GPA, you're going to be getting some help from the uh, administration building. I guarantee it. <laughs> But all, all joking aside, I want to congratulate your team. I want to congratulate yeah, Jamestown it. University to all your players because I, whenever I talk to a young man, I always remind them you're a student athlete. And so uh, yep. they should be very, very, very proud of that. You know, it's a cool, you, cool honor. You, uh, it is. You know, you went out. I know transfers are a dice roll, but you, you got it. You got some guys that really kind of, on paper at least, they look like they can come in and fill those holes you got with uh, Birch and Schultz leaving. Uh, yep. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure how you say his Jimmy. How do you say it? Linus from yeah. uh, Xavier. Linus. Linus. Yeah. Uh, you know he yeah. he was CCAC. He was freshman of the year over there. He led the uh, second in the country, I think, in in the country his freshman year in blocked shots. Six foot eight. Have you had a chance to see him practice yet? He actually came out here this summer. Okay. So we've gotten to see a lot of them. Well, he he could he could be uh, he's going to come in as a sophomore. I mean, he could be a key piece for you for the next few years. Uh, you also yeah, went. I mean, I mean, ahead. I mean, he's a he's he's a projected starter as of right now. So oh, okay. He's just been he's uh he's just he's got so many you know like running wise you know we do we did conditioning this preseason and you see him run and you're like holy cow. Like if that guy can get into shape and run the floor like that, you know, he's going to make us a lot better. And, um, you know, this summer he did a good job. Like he always wanted to guard Mason and, um, he just had an awesome summer. He got, he got stronger. Um, but he has a ton, ton of potential. That's kind of the way he looked on paper. So I was curious your take on him. The other guy, Danny, that really caught my eye was uh, Marcus Sherwood. He's out. He played down in Roseburg here uh, in Oregon at Umqua, uh, man, you poach those kids from Oregon, don't you? Anyway, 11.6 rebounds in his career there at Roseburg playing at Umqua. Uh, he's 6'7", 205. Yep. Talk a little bit about Marcus Sherwood. Uh, I mean, he's just uh, – first thing is he's an awesome kid. Um, 
he's a, he's different than us. He's actually married. Um, so I, I think this is the first married kid wow. I've had. So he's uh, just a mature kid, really smart, really, you know, just you tell him to run through a brick wall, he'll do it. Um, <laughs> he's, you know, he's he's one of those kids, like it it would probably take him a little bit of time to adjust um, just to, to everything and, you know, body wise, uh, um, just pace wise. So, um, you know, he's a, he's a good get for us. A good kid. Uh, I just probably next year, I don't know if you'll see him maybe in the box score a lot. Um, we had a kid actually, uh, red shirt last year, Cooper Olson. Right. Um, he's a transfer from Mary. He'll probably, He's projected right now as our backup five. And then there's one other transfer. He's not as tested, though. Uh, Reed Gassner, uh, he played over at Moorhead. That's uh, yep. NC2A D2, but he didn't play very much over there. Talk a little bit about Reed. Yeah, he actually played high school ball with uh, Mark Chose. He's a year he's a year younger, so they're really good friends. Um, I mean, he's 6'4", 230 pounds. You look at him and you're like uh, – he should probably be playing football, but um, we'll we'll take him. But he's just uh, he's adapting the stuff, and um, he's just a he's smart, um, big, strong, could guard. I mean, I think the the best thing about him is he's kind of like a Draymond Green defensively, where he's not like he's only six four, but he's big and strong, and he could he could literally guard the point guard, and he could guard the biggest five man in our league. Um, so I think that's where he'll impact us the most. Wow, if he can do that, he's going to give you a lot of help. Oh, for sure he will. He he just he just adds to the depth. I think that's one big thing. You know, maybe looking back on the last two years, like you know, oh, they went on runs at the end, but you know, they had their you know they had their lulls during the year. I think this year we have more depth than we've had you know maybe ever. You got a couple of freshmen too that look like they might have a chance of making the roster. Uh, Jacob Axemaker, he's another kid from Oregon. He played out at State, and and then uh, yep. Garrett Colbeck out of uh, South Dakota. He played at T. He uh, Axemaker told me that he came to Jamestown because you came to one of his games. <laughs> yeah, tell part <laughs> of no, that. He's a, yeah, <laughs> he's one of those kids. Like you know, he's six foot. 160 pounds and like you worried about him, you worry about him defensively and you know you worry about him adapting to the physicality of the game but he has been awesome oh good um he's been really good just one of those kids like he's not you know you get some of those freshmen that are a little fearful and you know you they have those look in their that look in their eyes like there's about 10,000 things running through their minds yeah. axe maker if you were to were to come and watch a practice, you would think he was an upperclassman. Okay, he's just got the that way presence. he presents himself. Yes, for sure, and he's not scared. And if he's open, he's not that freshman. It's like, should I shoot it? Should I not? Should I pass it? If he's open. He's shooting it. Oh, I love that. I that I call it floor presence. And, <laughs> and to be honest, if he's not open, he still might shoot. It. <laughs> well, what do they say, Danny? Shoot or shoot, right? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But we have another transfer to uh Colby Vasquez. He's from California. He will he has been very impressive and he will be a really good player for us. Okay, I missed him on the roster. He just fits us he fits us like not only like basketball wise, he plays off two feet just super, super well. Um, you know, really fits our offense. Um and again, we recruit a lot like 95 percent regionally and california is not a prime area for us but when we watch this film we're like man just basketball wise he really fits us um just how he plays but then when we got him it's like man not only does he fit us basketball wise but you know he's kind of the the jokester on the team and wow. you know the guy always smiling and he's just such a great culture guy for us too so he'll be He'll be an awesome player for us this year. And just so everybody knows, in full disclosure, when, when Danny Neville came out to watch Axemaker play out here in the West Coast, he was afraid to go to the gym by himself, so he called and begged me to meet him. And uh, <laughs> There we, you go. We had a lot of fun, though. That was a great night. Uh, yeah, it was. I'm, was glad, awesome. I'm glad to hear he's doing well. You know, you're going to kick off an early. you got a couple of uh, 
we call them exhibition games, and then you're going to kick off in early November. You know, I was talking to uh, Mark Svagar about this. You as well are going to start off with a couple of uh, North Star schools presentation and uh, Valley City, and you know they're laying for you. Oh, for sure. Um, I just think it's cool because, I mean, obviously, like, you know, scheduling-wise, it just makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our closest conference game is four hours. So, you know, it makes sense non-conference-wise. You know, we play Valley City twice. Well, we get a home game, and we go 40 miles down the road. Exactly. You know, yeah. we play presentation twice. Well, we go 100 miles south, and they come here. We play Dickinson. It's three. So most of our non-conference games are actually a lot closer than our conference games. And the other thing about that is they're old conference opponents. Exactly. So there's still some rivalry in there. You're not playing a team that, you know, you don't know much about. So I think that's really cool. Um, you know, obviously the North Star, like, you know, when you talk about national tournament wise, they're not, you know, you don't see a lot of teams or a lot of programs, but it just makes sense for us to keep those games for, you know, not only tradition, but also for our <laughs> for our traveling budget. Yeah, no, I completely, and you're, I left out Dickinson. You're actually going to start at home with Dickinson. And then, you know, presentation as a new coach this year. Yeah, so, they're gonna so they'll ha- be, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what they'll be. They'll have a different we'll look. Uh, and then, you know, now, and then in, in uh, what is it, in later in November, or yeah, it's around Thanksgiving, you go down to the show, which is a great honor for your program. And you're going to take on West Virginia Tech, who has a new coach again this year as well. And then uh, William Jessup. William Jessup's pr- more than likely going to be in the top five at that point. Uh, that That's going to be a big weekend for your program. Yeah, we see it. I mean, we wanted to play. We wanted a trip. Um, we had a California trip last year, and I thought the trip was really beneficial for us. Just, you know, like team bonding-wise and obviously going out to California is – it was really cool for us. So we wanted to go on a trip, but we also wanted, you know, we wanted um, some really, really good competition. Um, and then obviously joining the show, <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you look at the two teams you're playing and it's like, well, there's your good competition. And um, we actually, it was funny, funny story. So um, I was talking to the William Jessup coach and, you know, he's, you know, a good coach and they have a good team. And I, we wa- obviously watched them in, in Kansas city and, um, you know, I text him and I told him, we're only coming to the show if we play you. <laughs> and then he sent me a text and he's like, you know, we're only coming to the show if we play you. <laughs> so we're both going down there to play each other. And, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great opportunity for our guys. And, you know, one thing about playing William Jessup is we don't get to see a lot of those kind of teams. Yeah. So, I think it's very, very beneficial for us to see a top five. And I mean, who knows? They might be the number one team. They, who knows they might. With, with those guys? They're, they're loaded. And it's like, they're loaded, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's like, you know, it, it's, it's really cool to just, we want to, we want to see a team like that before maybe we go to regionals or before maybe we go to Kansas city. Exactly. To have seen a team like that already, now coming to a national tournament um, scene, like you're more confident playing those. Yeah, I'm going to see uh, William Jessup on October 28th. Uh, I'm going down to. Cl- I, I expect a full. I expect a full <laughs> scouting report on him at my usual at my usual <laughs> fee. But I'm really looking forward. Yep. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, I had some medical issues. For I sure. told the doctors. I said, whatever you do to me, I got to travel on October 28th. I mean, yeah. Yep. They said, well, the world doesn't revolve around basketball. I said, well, obviously, you're, you're flawed. You have a flawed view of the world if you don't believe <laughs> the world uh, revolves around basketball. But uh, sure. that'll be my first big trip, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you know, Danny, I really appreciate you taking the time. It sounds like, uh, you know, you've you've had a couple of, a couple of guys uh, graduate and move on. It sounds like you kind of refilled the cupboard. Uh Yep. You know, now the proof's in the pudding. I mean, I I know how competitive you are. How anxious are you for that first game? Oh, yeah, it's fun. Like, I mean, you just – you you spend so much time. Like, we had 16 guys here this summer, and, you know, you spend so much time, and you put in so much work, and then, you know, the preseason comes, and you can't touch them on the floor until yeah. yesterday. Yep. 
so that's been like you're just kind of sitting there waiting i mean conditioning on a turf field i mean that's not that's not basketball you know that's right i mean that's a team event but that's not that's not why we do it like we coaches love to coach just to get on the floor and i mean that's kind of their their thing and it's just been hard to this preseason to to not be around the guys and so yeah it's i think that new rule though like i know a lot of coaches maybe are against it and everything but i i mean i like it just i don't know if we didn't have guys here in the summer i don't know how much i would like it Mm -hmm. but we have guys here so it's it's a pretty good adjustment and then like you know you get that first month or so to just have them take some ownership have them organize open gyms have them do stuff so it's kind of kind of cool for them to have their own kind of ownership that first month rather than having us, you know, being yeah. all over them all. Because, cause again, like you know this, our some of our seasons don't end till the middle of March. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's September. Exactly. Like you you wanna you wanna keep them fresh. You don't wanna, you know. I think I, I don't know. That's just my opinion, but um, I feel really good about our team and. I think one big thing is you'll see this year is I think, you know, Schultz and Birch, I'm not going to take anything against them. I love them and they helped our program and they helped us to be where we're at. But, you know, this year we'll, we'll be able to move a little bit better. Um, we'll be able to guard a little bit better. Um, our big guys are a little bit more at agile. Um, you know, we can yeah. switch more stuff. So um, I think we'll be, I think we'll be better. I think we'll be better. Um, just team wise, you know, those, those older guys that we mentioned before, you, you know, are, have more, you know, of a leadership role. Um, that's one thing with Birch too. He was our, he was a great leader for five years. So imagine within those five years, people had to take the back seat to him. Yep. And so this is a first year where it gives an opportunity for other guys to be leaders. And I think that's just really, really going to help us. Yeah, and you watch. I mean, Nat, somebody's going to step up, and they'll probably surprise you. Yep. And you know that's just the way it works, and it's it's somebody else's time. So for sure, to, this it, is. It feels like it feels like this is one of those years where it's like I need to just get out of the way. You know what I'm saying? Like I I just need to let that. Like they're juniors, seniors. They they're super mature. They've been you know in in huge games. They've been in. Kansas City, they've been, they've done a lot of things. So I think this year is like, you know, just I need to get out of the way. Well, it'll be fun, and I can't wait to you to talk to you after the season gets going. I let you, you know, I follow GPAC basketball fairly, fairly close as well as close as I can. There are two hundred and whatever teams. That's a ton, but uh, we'll we'll talk more during the season for sure. You know that for sure. Yep, and it's glad to see you're doing well too. Yeah, thank you, Danny. That's Danny Neville. He's head coach there at Jamestown University, the Jimmies. And I want to remind everybody they had the third best GPA in all of NAI basketball. Uh, Danny, uh, congratulations on the success you've had. Good luck this season as the GPAC season starts. I appreciate it. And, again, I can't say this enough, but appreciate everything you do for NAI Hoops and appreciate everything you do for, for Jamestown as as well. And it's it's been good to, you know, I remember the first time you interviewed me to till now it's it's kind of cool to have you know another friend and somebody that you meet just because of basketball so appreciate our friendship it's been it's been fun yeah absolutely i (laughs) i appreciate your friendship too i'm getting old you know old guys start to lose friends so (laughs) i hang on to everyone i have so no thank you no one i don't really have any friends so it's (laughs) nice to have one no one really likes me so I, I, if I was a smart aleck, I would say that ain't that hard to figure out. But <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. all right. My guys love me. That's my guys love me, and my kids love me. That's all that matters. Okay. My wife. Uh, I'll get back to you on my yeah. wife. You better. Right, okay, I'm gonna do a. Uh, I'm gonna do the merciful thing and cut Neville off at this point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Danny. Bye bye. Yep. Thanks. See you. Hey, thank you very much to uh, Danny Neville, uh, Jamestown University, the Jimmies. As Danny alluded to, I've gotten to know him over the last few years, and I do value his friendship. He's a very nice guy, does a great job there at Jamestown. Uh, If you haven't looked at your team's schedule, take a look at it. Plan on getting out there, support these NAI athletes. Uh, It's A lot of times it's a doubleheader, not at every school, but 
I tell you what, this is definitely the most affordable quality basketball you can find. In fact, you could probably even say NAI basketball is the best entertainment value in America. Yeah.